Hello, and welcome to your kidney transplant corner. Today, I would like to talk to you about BK infection. What is BK infection? It's a viral infection that gets its name from the initials of the very first person that was ever diagnosed with the virus. It can affect one in 10 kidney transplant recipients after transplantation. So, how do people get this infection? Most of the people would have had the infection in their childhood. It goes unnoticed. The body clears the infection, but the virus remains asleep in the kidney and the urinary bladder. After transplantation, people receive anti-rejection medications. These medications suppress the immune system to help the body accept the kidney. If the immune system gets too suppressed, then the virus can wake up. It replicates, it starts appearing in the urine, blood, and it can infect the kidney. If it infects the kidney, it causes inflammation. This inflammation can make the creatinine go up. So, how do people feel if they have this infection? Well, most of the people notice no symptoms and have no complaints, but some may experience bladder irritation, such as frequency of urination and some burning on urination. So, how do you know if you have the virus? Well, the best way to find out is by checking for the viral particles in the blood because this infection is silent and the only way you know is by blood test. Centers do screen for this infection once a month in the first year and on occasions in the second and third year. So how do you get rid of this virus? Well, the mainstay in treatment is to reduce the immune suppression exposure. Your kidney transplant provider will reduce the doses of one or more of your medications while they monitor the kidney allograft functions very closely and the viral count. At times, they may have to change one or more of the medications to a more viral-friendly medications. So the idea is to strike a balance by which your immune system can kick the virus but not kick the kidney. The analogy I use most of the time is the perfect shower temperature. It's a balance between hot and cold until the ideal temperature is reached. And this is exactly what the transplant nephrologist tries to do, to help your body strike this balance, to allow it to kick the virus but not kick the kidney. So, are there other treatment options? There is. Some centers use intravenous immunoglobulins, or IVIG. These are antibodies collected from healthy individuals, purified and ready for use. The idea behind it is the antibodies may stick to the virus. And when that happens, the body may be able to clear it. And as these antibodies are used to treat some kinds of rejection, they may be tough on the virus, but not cause rejection themselves. So, are there antivirals that can be used? Well, there's one, but it does not work in everyone, and it has so many side effects, one of which can be kidney damage. So, the transplant providers and the recipients will have to decide on the risks and benefits, and they may elicit the help of a transplant infectious disease specialist to weigh the risks and benefits and decide on case-by-case -case basis. So, how long does it take to clear, and what do you expect along the course? Well, it can take several months to clear. Some clear it sooner than others. A few may not be able to clear it. What to expect is the frequency of the lab draws will increase to every two weeks or more. Along the journey, your transplant nephrologist may ask for kidney transplant biopsy. And the idea behind this is to assess the degree of infection and if rejection has happened. Luckily, people don't lose their kidneys as often as it used to be in the past to BK infection. Early detection and close monitoring help, but about 15 to 20% may lose their kidney functions to BK or rejection under these circumstances. So, what can people do 
to limit the complications of the BK infections. Well, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure that we don't have. So, one, recipients will have to get screened once a month in their first year and, and be aware of the BK virus. Two, recipients will have to follow up on the test results with the help of their coordinators and know if they have the BK virus or not. And three, if the infection develops, recipients will have to follow the instructions of the transplant team in terms of doses changes, medication changes, and the increased frequency of lab monitoring and get these done in timely fashion. With this, I conclude my video and I thank you so much for your attention.